Hello, Amiga coders. This is Photon again, continuing with the blitter, this time uh, to teach scrolling. Uh, here's where we were, and uh, I thought I'd continue with the little um, table that we made. Um, and um, explain the most common um, min terms. Now, if you have two sources, you can um, enable uh, these two, and then you get the nine that we used. Um, right here. Let's temporarily move temporarily move that up to where the blit is. So here we go. Um, so here's sort of our s sum of the min term. Those those eight bits becomes um, this F0 combination and these four channel selector bits becomes this digit 9. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about um, enabling the channels. When you do a copy of course you can um, set the blitter B pointers and enable the B source or you can set the C pointers and C modulo and and enable the C source and get uh, 5 and 3 respectively instead of 9. However, uh, looking at the cycle sequence diagrams in the hardware reference manual, uh, these are less efficient by at least uh, a few cycles than th these conventional um, channel enable bits and of course if you use the C channel you can't set any sort of shift in your copy and we want to do that because we want to make a scroll. Uh, so that's two sources. What happens if you add another one? Well, in the same way there are some channel selector bits that are a little more efficient than others. For example, if we were to enable another source and enable this source, we would get 8 plus 2 plus 1, which is uh, B, uh, which is which certainly is certainly is possible. If we were getting freaky, we could enable channels B, C, and get the result in D. But this is the less efficient um, channel selector ask. So the conventional way is to to add sources from A, then B, then C, until you. Uh, have enabled all the channels that you want to use in your blit. That way you're sure that, that uh, you're not wasting uh, any cycles. Um, what if we enable this? Uh, this is our 9 that we use. Um, for the copy, if we wanted to or uh, something onto the screen, for example, to make so-called shade bobs or simply add more stuff uh, without replacing what's there, then we could enable the B channel and select the bit combinations for which we want a 1 in the output. When we OR, it seems intuitive that more of these bits should be one, right? Because right now only if these channel bits in A are one is the destination set to one. But when we OR something to the screen uh, we want these D bits to be one also when channel B is one. When is channel B one? Well here, here, here and here. And of course, these two lower ones are already one, 
so we only need to enable these. And what does this work out to? Well, if we type six ones and two zeros, we get FC. And if we enable three channels, this becomes eight plus four plus one, which is D13 or D in, d in hexadecimal. So what we get then is DFC, which is a very common um, uh, blitter control word, blitcon zero control word, word I, I should say. So that's for oring, and if you also want to mask, for example, make a so-called cookie cut blit, where you uh, replace all the bits inside a certain mask, for example, the outline of a spaceship or or the contour of a bob, anyway, uh, then you would like to modify it further. Then you would need an extra channel for uh, for the um, outline of the bob. Then you would actually enable all the sources in the blitter, and this would become F. And uh, let's see what we want to do about this. Well, uh, that depends on what you point your sources to, but if you point the um, A and B to the bob and the mask and the C channel to the screen, the screen that you're modifying, uh, where you want to replace all the pixels within the outline and or the stuff outside the outline to what's already on the screen, i.e already in the C channel, then it turns out that you get CA here. And that's, this is how that looks. So that, without going into too much detail, uh, where we have Bob graphics, and uh, we are within the outline, then the bob graphics get transferred to the to the output where else is the mask one well here hmm, i may be mistaken but i don't think so either way uh, these are three very very common um, min terms that you can use uh, for your blitz so That's that. So uh, if we go back to our scroller, that should indeed be a copy blit still, because we want to copy exactly what's on the screen one step left. And if you re remember from um, the previous lesson, or tutorial, sorry, um, then when the blitter is working in ascending mode, or increasing mode, as it is uh, with this little control word, long word, then um, it will shift to the right. And we don't want that. We want to shift to the left, right? Because we read from left to right, and so we want the scroll to pass by our, our eyes from, from right to left. So we want to scroll left. If you're making a scroll in Arabic, then of course you must scroll right instead. So we already demonstrated that uh, we shift rightward like this. Uh, so it's tempting to think, well, what if I point the destination to the same place uh, minus two bytes. That's 16, right? 16 to, to the left. And then I shift it back by uh, by 15 steps. That should shift it to the left one step, shouldn't it? Actually, it does. So why don't we use that? Shall we check it again? Looks fine to me. So 
So we've just uh, tested out that either way is, is fine. I'm going to show you the other way because I'm because of um, my contrariness. So this puts the blitter in um, descending mode instead. And we can no longer use um, the top left corner as our starting point. We can keep the modulos because they're correct. As I said, in descending mode, the blitter works backwards in memory and subtracts the modulos to skip uh, the space between the rows in the blitter rectangle. Uh, but here instead we must calculate the lower right corner and point these um, addresses, source and destination, to the, l the leftmost and bottommost word of the blit. That is, we can't point them to after the bottom right corner, we must point them to one word within this blitter rectangle. Because after all, if we used ascending mode, then the f this address would point to the first word inside uh, the blitter rectangle. How do we calculate that? Well, we must uh, calculate some further, apart from this x and y offset, we must calculate a row and a column offset. We know that the blitter width is that much, so it's safe to assume that we could add this amount, minus 2, to get us uh, to the right edge, to within the right edge. We subtract 2 so that we point to the very last word of the blit. Uh, as for the height, we have, uh, we have the height here, and we need to calculate, uh, multiply this not by the blit width, because that rectangle is smaller than the screen width. Um, and we know that this screen width is uh, w divided by 8 bytes wide. So that means that our um, descending offset, or br corner, let's call it that, will equal the blitter height minus 1, right? Because we don't want to be on the last line of the blit, we want to be within the blitter rectangle. We want to multiply that by width divided by 8. Because that's um, uh, the total amount of bytes per screen row. Uh, and finally, we want to add the blitter width in bytes. Uh, sorry, that's in words. So we need to multiply that by 2 and then finally subtract 2. There we have our BR corner. Shall we test this, gentlemen? And it helps spelling correctly, as always. So that points us to the correct place, and it will start reading from this uh, bottom right corner. Read uh, BLTW words, and then skip BLT skip bytes to reach the right edge of the row above it. So the descending mode then puts us in... in uh, left shifting mode so that we can shift one step left and we should see the same result as before. And that seems to have worked fine. Now we need to put this little chunk of code and we should rename this to scroll, right? Uh, because th this code is now in the init, so it's just performed one, th one time. And if then we put this in a subroutine or a function, is a more modern way to call it, and we we're out of imagination this late at night, so we'll call it scroll. Scroll it. 
and don't forget the RTS. And if you want, you can you can save and restore the registers. To be good boys, and we are, aren't we? We're always good boys, and we get the best presents for Christmas every year. Not at all socks and underwear. Uh, as penalty for our sins. Okay. So there we have our little scroll routine. And what happens if we call this in the main loop? When should we call it? Well, here's a little trick. We're not using double buffering yet. So we need to perform it before the raster hits the top of this blitter, blitter rectangle that we've defined. But I suspect that we've just used a few cycles of this frame since uh, this scan line so that we can just add it to the end here. So, let's see what happens. Always exciting. Isn't that wonderful? Now you may wonder, why is it looping? Well, you'll find out in a few seconds what's happening. What's happening here is that um, as the bits go out on the left side, they come in at the right side because the blitter contains a barrel shifter. And that's what magically enables you to scroll more than one pixel per frame and keep the contents basically if you compare it to the rotate with ex extend instruction that instruction can only handle one bit so that if you want to scroll uh, register contents more than one step left or right then you must simply perform a rotate left many times uh, not so with the blitter um, the blitter has a barrel shifter and what you can see on the screen now is uh, when the blitter starts, it has no input. It barrel shifts in whatever's in uh, the source uh, data registers for the blitter. And uh, only until it's read the first word, the bottom rightmost word, does it have data that we can call valid to shift into uh, the word to the left of it. So, you've just made your first scroll routine. Join me in the next tutorial, uh, which is a Dpaint Deluxe Paint tutorial, where we'll make a font for our little scroller. See you then. Bye.